بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ليقول الشيخ العلامة عبد الرزاق بن الشيخ العلامة عبد المحسن بن حمد العباد البدر حفظهم الله في كتابه أو في رسالته عشر قواعد في تزكية النفس القاعدة الأولى التوحيد أصل ما تزكو به النفوس So الشيخ عبد الرزاق حفظه الله He mentions the first principle the first نعم principle in his book or in his treatise entitled 10 principles concerning self-purification or the purification of the self so he says principle number one التوحيد أصل ما تزكو به النفوس he said التوحيد is the essence is the essence is the أصل of what purifies the souls the essence of what purifies the soul is knowledge of the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Tawheed loosely translated as monotheism. The word Tawheed coming from Wahada Yuwahidu, which means to make something one. Wahada Shay Yani Jalahu Fardan. Right? To make to, when you say I made Tawheed of something, is you made it alone. Stand alone or make it one, singular. Right? So, in this, we're saying that Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, in His names, in His attributes, in His actions, and in the, our worship of Him Azza wa Jal, we make all of those things one and only for Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So, we don't, we don't consider anybody having any portion in His actions. Jalla wa ala, we don't have any, we don't we don't believe that uh, he has any uh, partners in his names or in his attributes. His names and his attributes, his beautiful names and perfect attributes, are his and his alone. Jalla wa ala, and none share in it with him. And then we say that. The worship that is done for him, Azza wa Jal, is that worship is not dedicated or is not directed towards anything except him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the forms of worship, whether that's the forms of worship that are physical, from the salawat, from hajj, from zakat, from dhabh, right, slaughtering, uh, Ruku, sujood, all of these things, right? And then the the worships or the forms of worship that come from the heart, like dua, right? Like like supplication, mahabba, love, raja, hope, khawf, fear, and so on and so forth. Tawakkul, right? Trust, inaba, right? Longing for, istighatha, seeking refuge in. All of these things we do it only for Allah Azza wa Jal. All the forms of worship, whether it's it's inner or exterior, interior or exterior forms of worship, all of it is done for Allah Azza wa Jal. Taib. Then he says, "Aslu ma tazku bihi nufus." It's the principle or the essence of by which all things are or all souls find their purification. So therefore, he's the, from the onset, he's saying what? No matter how much Qur'an you read, no how many days you fast, how much salah you, you, you pray, you pray your five prayers, you pray your sunan, you pray tahajjud, all the things that you do, you make dhikr day and night, day and night. But if your heart isn't nurtured upon tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, then it's pointless. Because... The foundation, of, it's like me building uh, building a home on no foundation, on water, right? 
every time I put a beam down, it just goes into the water and it washed away into the ocean, right? You can't build a foundation on, like that. You have to have a solid foundation, right? So, uh, or shoving a bunch of leaves into the ground, right? If you shove a bunch of leaves into the ground, does anything happen? Isa, does anything happen? No, it's, it's pointless. You're making compost. It's not going to grow anything, right? You have to put a seed, no matter how small that seed is, right? No matter how small that seed is, insignificant to the beholder of that seed is, it doesn't matter. You put that into the ground, you cover it up with dirt, you put a little bit of water in it, and that tree in a couple hundred years becomes what? Three, four hundred feet, or you know, 50, 60 feet tall, right? But it came from the small seed. So it's not about how much, right? It's not about the actions even, praying, fasting, these things. These are all important, no doubt. But they have to have a foundation. Like Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives a, a beautiful example of the mu'min, uh, the believer, like, as a, like a tree, right? So He says the kalima tayyibah, the, the, the good word, here it means la ilaha illallah, is like a tree, right? وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةً طَيِّبَةً Right? He said, Azza wa Jal, that indeed the, the, the metaphor or the similitude of a good word is like a good tree. Right? أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Its foundations are firm in the ground. وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ And its fruits, its leaves are in in the sky or right, above in the heaven. So that's the, that's the mu'min. His asal is thabit. He has, he has to have a foundation that's firm and strong. Right? He has to be firm and strong. That's tawheed. That's la ilaha illallah. That's la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's the firm thing. And everything else that comes after that, if it's based on that, if it's based on tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, then... It bears fruit. Without that, it bears no fruit. Right? It's the principle. It's the essence. You can't even begin to dream or even imagine self-purification without Tawheed of Allah Azza wa For 13 years, Prophet Isa taught only Tawheed. Only Tawheed of Allah Azza wa The Salah came later on near the Hijrah. But in the Meccan period, when there was no hijab, there was no tahrim of alcohol, there was no prohibition of alcohol. There was no uh, nothing. Right? Very few injunctions came in the Meccan period of Islam. The only thing the Prophet ﷺ was charged to, uh, to call the people to was the correction of their aqidah, was the correction of their understanding of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So once they understood Allah Azza wa Jal, they understood who Allah Azza wa Jal is, what He deserves, then, then the tahrim came, the wajibat came, the prohibitions came, the obligations came, right? Because there's a foundation laid upon which those things could, could, could build. That's tawheed. So he goes on to say, the Shaykh Hafidahullah, Shaykh Abdul Razak, he says, Inna tawheeda huwa al ghayatu allati min ajliha khalaqana Allah azza wa jal wa awjadana. He said, indeed, verily, Tawheed, monotheism, the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal is the purpose for which it is the point or the goal or the end game for which Allah Azza wa Jal, He created us for. He created us for this reason and He brought us to his, into existence for this reason. كَمَا قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ As Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Qur'an, and I have not created the jinn nor the mankind except to worship me. I have not created the, the jinn nor mankind except to worship me. And here the Mufassirun, they say, إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Some of the Mufassirin, they say, إِلَّا لِيُوَحِدُونَ Right? إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Except to worship me. Meaning, إِلَّا لِيُوَحِدُونَ Except to single me out in that worship. Right? Single me out in that worship. He goes on to say, وَهُوَ أَيْضًا مِحْوَرُ دَعْوَةِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالرُّسُلِ 
Also, it is that thing which the the call of the prophets and the messengers revolved around. It was the center of the da'wah of the prophets and the messengers. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ as Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, indeed, we, indeed, without beyond a shadow of a doubt, we have sent in every nation a, a messenger saying, "What worship Allah Azza wa Jalla and beware and stay away from the taghut, from everything worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jalla. Everything worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jalla is a taghut." Okay, and then he goes on to say, "What tawhidu huwa awwalu ma yajibu ala al-insani lil fi din al-Islam." He said, and Tawheed, monotheism, is the first thing that is obligatory upon the human being in order for him to enter the, into the fold of Islam. If you want to become a Muslim, you don't say, okay, brother, make wudu. All right, John, let's make wudu. And you got to pray to raka. That's not how it works. They say, they have to believe and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They have to make iqrar. They have to agree, they have to make uh, open their belief that there's nothing worthy of worship in truth except Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So Tawheed is what enters the people into Islam. And is Tawheed here means what? Is it Tawheed, Rububiyah is enough? To know that Allah Azza wa Jal is, the God, is your Lord, is your God, is your creator, sustainer, your provider, the one who causes you know, life and death, is that sufficient? He says that's sufficient? No. You say no? The Mushrikeen believe that. Abu Jahl believed it. Abu Lahab believed it. Right? Shaitan believes it too. Right? The Shaitan believes it too. He, he says, Ya Rabbi. Right? Rabbi anzirni ila yawmin yubathun. He says, Rabbi, my Lord. The Shaitan's dua in the Quran was what? Rabbi, my Lord. Anzirni. Uh, give me repose, repose, I should say. Give me time until the day that they're uh, called back to you. Right? That he, he's asking Allah Azza wa Jal to, to, be, to stay alive, to give him lasting life until the day of judgment. Right? But he called upon him by saying, My Lord. So now, is Abu Jahl, oh, sorry, is the shaitan, is he mu'min? You have some ghulat of Sufi, I would say. They say, right? Abu, uh, Abu, Abu Jahl who, who believed according to the Quran, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ If you were to ask him, Allah Azza wa Jalla says to you, Um of Muhammad, He says to you, if you were to ask them, meaning the mushrikun, مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Who created the heavens and the earth? لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ Indeed, verily, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they would say Allah Azza wa Jal. So when you have some of these Naqshbandiya and Sahlawardiya and the Chistiya and the Qadiriya and the Madriyesh, whatever these names of these Sufi groups, they sit and they chant like these, uh, you know, I forgot his name, Alhamdulillah, one of the uh, leaders of the Naqshbandi group. They say, they sat in a gathering where there's kuffar and they said, we're going to do La ilaha illallah. And they go, La ilaha illallah. And they just repeat again and again and again. Then they bring the duff in and then they bring the duff and they're doing La ilaha illallah. And they're moving their heads left and right. So he made sharh beginning. You know, he said, what? You know what is, all we're saying is La ilaha illallah. That there's no creator, no sustainer, no giver of life and death except the one true God. I said, subhanAllah, on that tafsir, that explanation of La ilaha illallah, Abu Lahab was a mu'min, was a Muslim. Abu Jahl was a mu'min, Muslim, right? All of the mushrikun of Mecca were all Muslims, according to that tafsir, right? And not because I said it, or some sheikh said it, or an alim said it. It's in the Qur'an, it's in the book that they claim to read and love and, and follow. Yes? So this is not enough. The tawheed that is... The first thing that's incumbent upon the human being to even enter the fold of Islam is not simply the Tawheed of Rububiyyah, which is the Tawheed of Lordship, the monotheism of Lordship. That's not sufficient. Right? Christians believe that too. Jews believe that too, better than Christians. Right? 
But what is required of the human being is to believe and act upon the Tawheed of Al-Uluhiyya, the Tawheed of worship, the Tawheed, the monotheism of worship, right? That's what's, that's what's obligatory upon the, upon the human being. And that's what enters the human being into the fold of Islam. Or else the Jews and the Christians are also Muslim. Because they also believe in Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? But are they Muslim? Of course they're not. Because we call them Nasara, we call them Yahud. We call them Ahlul Kitab. We call them Kuffar. Why? Because they don't practice and acknowledge this Tawheed of Uluhiyya. The, the monotheism of worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal constantly connects the line in the Quran between the Tawheed of Rububiyyah, the Lordship of, of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the Tawheed of Uluhiyyah, the monotheism of worship, constantly, right? He constantly, if he's like, if I'm the only one who, who gives you life and gives you death, provides for you, is the sustainer of the heavens and the earth, then worship only me. Then worship only me. It's a constant theme throughout the Quran. And like Al Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala he said that Al Quranu min awwalihi ila akhirihi tuhid. He said the Quran from its beginning to its end, all of it is tuhid. All of it is tuhid. So it's the principle, it's the essence, it's the. Oh, your, your thing is dying. Uh, it's okay, I'm recording it. It's the essence upon which, uh, upon which the mu'min builds his iman. Without this, there's no iman. When the Prophet sallallahu was asked by Jibreel السلام, he said, "Akhbirni an al-iman, inform me about iman." The Prophet السلام, he said, "What? An tu'mina billahi." Number one, that you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa rusulihi wa kutubihi wa al-yawm al-akhir wa al-qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi Right? So you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the first thing. And then His angels, His books, His messengers and prophets. And then the day of judgment. And then He said, and the pre-decree of your Lord, the good of it and the bad of it. But he began with what? With Allah Azza wa that you have to believe in Allah Azza wa correctly. Why did he make that an issue if the, if, the, if the Arabs already believed, the pagan Arabs already believed in Allah Azza wa Right? A good example of that is in the great grandfather of the Prophet ﷺ when Abraha came with his army of elephants from Ethiopia, from Habash, right? To destroy the Kaaba. Because some pagan Arabs, they got drunk, you know. The story goes, in the hadith, it goes that the, some pagan Arabs became drunk. They got drunk and then they defecated in, they, akramukumullah, they defecated in a, in a church and then they smeared their, defe, their, their, their feces all over the walls of the church. Right? So, of course, Abraha is like, you know, play that. So he got on his army of elephants and he came from Mecca. And what did Abdul Muttalib he did he do he did he sent all the Ahlul Mecca to the people of Mecca to Taif, which is the city on the mountain. It's their masif. It's their summer. It's where they spend their summers, right? They did that too back then. Especially in Mecca is hot. If anybody's been there, so Taif is on this is on the mountains. It's cooler. It's higher up. So he sent everybody there, right? And he stayed by himself. And Abraha, on the outskirts of Mecca, he took all the camels from Abdul Muttalib. So what did Abdul Muttalib do by himself, alone? He went out to meet Abraha. And Abraha's like, what are you doing? He's like, I came to get my camels back from you. And he's like, you're you're worried about your camels? I'm coming to destroy the house of your God. The house of your God, I'm going to destroy it. He said, أَمَّا هَذَا الْبَيْتِ فَلَهُ الرَّبِّ وَأَمَّا أَنَا فَأَنَا رَبُّ الْإِبْلِ 
Fa'ati. Yes. So that, that was his, you imagine that the response was amazing from him. But it didn't enter him into Islam. He wasn't a Muslim. He said, as for this house, he's talking about the Kaaba, that it has a God, it has a Lord, and he'll take care of it. As for me, I'm the Lord of camels. I, that's my responsibility. Give me back my camels. Right? Look at the, there's Tawheed there, isn't there? He's, he's not calling upon Lat and Uzza and Manat and Hubal and all these other gods that they had in, 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 in pagan Mushrik Mecca. No. He said, that house, it has a God. Right? And that God will take care of that house. So, that, didn't, that wasn't sufficient. It's not sufficient. What's sufficient, what enters a human being into the fold of Islam, is to draw the lines between that and saying, so therefore, I will worship only you, O Allah. O the one who created me, fashioned me, give me who is the causer of life and death, who will bring me back, resurrect me. You, the one who is in control of the cosmos itself, the upholder of the heavens and the earth, nothing happens except with your permission, I'm going to worship only you. Not even, I'm not going to worship Muhammad Ali I'm not going to worship Isa, Jesus. I'm not going to worship Moses. I'm not going to worship the, the means that you created on the earth. Right? I'm going to worship the Musabib, the one who is the initial cause of all things. The one who is in control of all things. And that's what enters the human being into the fold of Islam. And then he says, وَكَذَلِكَ هُوَ أَوَّلُ مَا يَجِبُ عَلَى الدَّاعِيَةِ uh, right? And this is the first thing that's obligatory, compulsory upon the da'i, upon the one who gives da'wah, upon the caller to Allah Azza wa Jal, that he teaches, he begins with tawheed. He begins teaching the people, and the first thing he teaches is a tawheed. He doesn't talk about Brothers, we have to pray five times a day. We do. Brother, we have to don't oppress one another. We do. That's, that's all of these things are true. But before that even happens, brother, you have to put your hands here. You have to put your hands there. Brother, you have to lift your hands. You don't have to lift your hands. Brother, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, twitch your finger. You gotta don't don't twitch your finger. Brother, you gotta, you gotta sit like this. You don't have to sit like this. All of those things are important. All of them are important. Every single thing is important. But none of, those things, none of those things matter if your aqidah, if what you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal is shirk. If you're associating partners in your worship with Allah, then it doesn't matter how you worship Him. You could do it the right way or the wrong way. You could do it the sunnah way or the bid'ah way. If you're the asal of the worship, which is the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, if it's not there, if the, if the essence of the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal is not there, then it's, 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 it's a mood point. It makes, it makes no difference. So the first thing that the person who calls to Allah Azza wa Jal, who calls to Islam, he calls to is the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? And this is something, a wasiyya nabawiyya, it's a prophetic a prophetic counsel of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what he taught his Sahaba to teach the people when he sent them out. He says, Like the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu when he sent him to Yemen. He said, إِنَّكَ تَقْدَمُ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Indeed, you will come upon a people in Yemen who are from the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. There were many in, in Yemen, right? He said, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ And so let it be the first thing that you call them to is that they single out Allah Azza wa Jal in worship. He, the Prophet ﷺ literally used the words, أَنْ يُوَحِّدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهِ That's what the Prophet said in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. The hadith is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. In one riwayah, in one narration, or one wording of the hadith, he says, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ 
أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Let it be that the first thing that you call them to is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Right? So we have one wording saying لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And the other wording saying what? أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهِ And they explain one another. Both wordings what? Explain one another. That لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Means to single out Allah and Azza wa Jal in His worship. This is the beauty of the hadith. This is the beauty of the hadith when you study. Right? Not just one hadith and then you run with it. Or just one ayah and then you run with it. This is not the madhab of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is not the way. This is not the way of Ahl sunnah A Sunni Muslim doesn't behave that way. The, the entirety of the Qur'an and the entirety of the life and tradition of the Prophet wasalam, that's what we base our beliefs on. Not one year, two years of the life of the Prophet. Or one ayah that was revealed to him. Or one hadith that he might have said. All of it. All of it is revelation. And all of it is what we believe in. So that's what we base our beliefs on. Hmm. وقد, and then he goes on to say وَقَدْ تَوَاعَدَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ الَّذِينَ لَا يز, 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 يَزَكُّونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ وَالْإِيمَانِ بِالْعَذَابِ الشَّدِيدِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And he said, حَفِذَهُ اللَّهُ The Shaykh Abdul Razak, he said And Allah Azza wa Jal, He has promised And it's a negative promise, not a positive In English, I guess you could say تَوَاعَدَ يُوَعِدُ is to, to threaten somebody Right? But, in, but in, re, in, in, in the linguistic sense, it means to promise something. Right? To, so, Allah, so he's saying that Allah Azza wa Jalla has promised those who do not purify themselves, themselves, whether it's their bodies or their souls. And over here he means more importantly here is the soul itself, the self. Those who do not purify themselves and their souls with tawheed. And Iman, right? He says he has promised them al adab al shadid, a severe punishment on the day of on the day of judgment, a severe punishment. فَقَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ For indeed Allah عَزَّ وَجَلْ has said, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَيْلٌ وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَيْلٌ in Arabic has different meanings. Uh, some of the ulama of tafsir has said wail is like to say um, woe, beware you know woe to the mushrikeen it's an old English term to mean like what's wrong with you or beware it's you know of an incumbent danger right this is the problem with our, our English today is very poor right? these things aren't used anymore right in any case so this is one tafsir of it. It's usually translated in some of the uh, some of the translations of the Quran like this. Also, though, that's mentioned in the in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ was once asked, "Wama al-wailu ya Rasulullah?" Right? Ali said Islam. He said there was, the Sahaba asked him, "And what is wail, O Messenger of Allah? What is wail?" Right? And he said, "It's a valley, or a river, or a valley in Jahannam." So here, if you uh, uh, put that into context, when Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ Right? Wail be to the mushrikun, meaning a river or a valley in Jahannam is for the mushrikun. Right? And then he says, أَلَّذِينَ Those who لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ Those who do not Approach one way of translating it as zakah, purification of the self. Wahum bil hum kafirun, and they are disbelievers in the hereafter. This was a specific belief of some of the people of them from the mushrikun. There were the the very few uh, civilizations on earth that didn't believe in hereafter. Very few, save the mulhidun. Of course, the atheists and the people who don't believe in anything except what they can see, right? Or calculate or, you know, hypothesize, right? Because who's seen a black hole really, right? <laughs> or a quantum particle. But any, in any case, right? So, um, 
but the mushriks in, in the, 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 the mushriks in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that's one of the things that they believed in. That they didn't believe in a ba'ath, they didn't believe in a resurrection in the hereafter. Right? Sorry. And that's some of the, the Jews who believe Yeah, the Jews. I'm saying the, 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 the pagans of pagan Arabs, they didn't believe. There are very few uh, civilizations on earth. These pagan Arabs that the Prophet ﷺ was sent to were the few. They didn't believe in a hereafter. Right? Like they used to say, like, uh, uh, ramim. Ramim. Right? They, they said to the Prophet, he, in, the, in the tafsir, a man came, he grabbed like dirt from the ground and he threw it in the Prophet's face. He, he blew it in the Prophet's face. He said, And who will bring the bones back to life? And they become dust. And the Prophet didn't say anything, and then revelation came to him. Look at the humility of the Prophet. He didn't care about himself being disrespected, alayhi salatu wasalam. Right? So he waited for the answer to come from Allah Azza wa Jalla, and it came. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, strong refutation. He said, what? قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا أَلَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ, خل- وهو بكل خَلْقٍ عَلِيمٍ He said, say to them, he will bring him to life the one who created it in the first place the bones and he is well aware and knowledgeable of every single creation right look at the refutation there from Allah he said you're, you're saying to the, you're saying to me O mushrik O pagan that who could bring the bones back to life after they become dust, say the one who brought the bones into life in the first place. That's the one who could bring them back from the dust. What's more difficult, to bring something from nothing? Or to bring something back to life once it's, you know, just changed states from solid to dust? It's nothing. That's nothing. Sahad, easy. Right? For Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? You know these uh, these physicists and these you know quantum mechanics people. They try to. They wrote a book. You know, like Lawrence Cross. He wrote a book, something from nothing. You guys know about that book? You know who Lawrence Cross is? You've heard of him, yeah? He's a physicist. Fortunately, you know, when you study physics, you have to read his garbage, right? But he had. He wrote a book called. Uh, he also wrote a book called The Science of Star Trek. So keep that in mind. Right, this who, 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 who you're listening or who, who this scientist quote unquote is I mean like he's he's uh, well renowned in his field but Taban he's a blazing atheist he's a militant atheist right uh, and so that's going to influence his science whether he wants to admit it or not so he wrote a book called Something from Nothing where he tried to show using some sort of you know uh, Sihr math you know, some sort of like this magical math that they use, that something can come from absolutely nothing, right? But at the end, he shot himself in the foot by describing empty space as something, right? Quantum fluctuations, yada, yada, you don't have to go into it. But the point is, is that even Stephen Hawking's before, five or 15 years ago or 10 years ago, he got on board with the theory called M-theory, which is a, a amalgamation of five different theories smashed together, one of those things being string theory, right? quantum gravity and things like that and he said that yeah before he used to say no it's too erratic you know it's too spontaneous if you believe that things can come in and out of existence then what's the what are the boundaries can people come in and out of existence or is that only with for quantum particles is that only for subatomic particles right but and then near you know near his death about i think about five ten years ago he he got on board Right? So a brother was talking to me about it. He said, look, Akhi, this is kufr. You can't believe in this. I said, slow down. I said, let's say they, be, let's say they prove somehow some loose fashion. Because they never can prove anything absolutely. But in some loose fashion, they prove that things can appear randomly from nothing. Things meaning like subatomic particles or whatever. Does that negate the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal? Or does it affirm it beyond a shadow of a doubt? Affirms it, Yaqi. Because Allah Azza wa Jal Asal is outside of creation, outside of time space. If you were able to witness creation happening, you would witness something popping out of nowhere. 
What do you think? Would you be... Can you witness Allah Azza wa Jal? Absolutely not. He's outside of time and space. In the dunya, Allah cannot be seen. He's not given the capacity of anything created to see Him. Right? So if you were to see an atom come into existence, what would you see? Nothing. You would just see a photon into existence. You wouldn't see. So these are things that we need Muslims, especially tulab al-ilm, scholars, ulama, to address. Right? But the point is, huh? Big time. Big time. Barakallahu feek. Big time. But the point is, is that these kuffar, akhi, you know, they do, Allah describes them like this in the Quran. Wahum fi shakkin yalabun. It's a beautiful verse in the Quran. And they are just, they play around in doubt. It's a beautiful verse. Wahum fi shakkin yalabun. And they are simply in a state of doubt, playing around. That's all they do, smashing photons together in the, you know, LHC in, 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 in Switzerland. Huh? What surah and verse? I don't, I'll get it to you, inshallah, right? In Switzerland, you know, that, and they have that big, uh, large hadron collider that they have, the LHC, right? Uh, what do they call it? There's another word for it. Um, anyways, I don't know, that, that's the proper name for it. There's, a, there's like a name they give it, like an abbreviation. But it's called the Large Hadron Collider. Right? Accelerator? Particle accelerator is one thing that's known as, yeah. Where they, yeah, they just accelerate subatomic particles near to the speed of light, which takes energy. This takes billions of dollars, my brothers. Women and children dying in Africa from, from starvation, but let's smash some photons together, why don't we? Because that's so important. Right? That's more important than life, than death, than a child dying from starvation. For the kuffar, huh? What are they trying to do? What they're trying to do is they're trying to find the this the, the asal of what gives mass to or holds together these subatomic particles. It's a long thing. So in, in quantum in, in, in physics or in quantum mechanics I should say, uh, or in physics, there's there's two types of physics. There's Newtonian physics, which describes or in, in like like uh, theory of relativity, like Einstein what he dealt with, which is large objects, right? So things that are atoms and bigger or bigger than atoms right molecules planets rocks stones whatever right so the laws that govern what keeps them together what attracts them to each other how the moon is not falling into our atmosphere huh whatever follows the newton's law newton's yeah but so i mean okay so this is not going to be a dars on physics but newtonian physics is different from like Einstein, what he did was he showed that, um, and he didn't like it. He hated it. He used to call it spooky action from a distance. He hated it. But through his, you know, you know his um, calculations, he showed that there is a subatomic relationship between uh, objects. Okay. So what Newton did was the apple dropped on his, you know, the famous apple dropped on his head. He's like, oh, what's causing the apple to drop on my head? He says, something must be pulling it. And then, you know, he did the experiments. You know, he dropped two objects from, a, from whatever height. They fall at the same speed, right? If their mass is the same, yada, yada, yada. If but these fall at the same rate, okay? So he said, so something's pulling them. They're not falling. Something's pulling them down. So then the gravity became a theory and yada, yada, yada. What Einstein showed by mistake was that there's not so if earth can pull what's causing the giving the earth the right to pull why is it pulling it must be through calculations the mass the size of it is pulling okay but an apple also has mass does it not okay so whether however insignificant the apple must be pulling on the earth too right so he showed at a subatomic level it's not only the apple falling, but it's the apple pulling the earth up to it. Okay? So that was a big problem he had. Then he showed things like, um, he predicted things like black holes, he predicted things like subatomic particles that we know what keeps, like if I, if I keep, if I, the earth, what keeps it together is the mass of it, it's the, the weight of it, it pushing down on it, keeps it together. Okay? What about an atom? Right? 
Adam is what keeps it together. Glue, right? This is the theory of subatomic particles of Majid Hamid. Right? <laughs> so what gives mass to, to us or to objects according to physics is atoms. Atoms, unfortunately, gravity doesn't, doesn't, doesn't have any effect on them. Gravity keeps the earth together, right? As much mass and it pulls it together, yada, yada, yada. But atoms are too small for gravity to have any effect on them. So what keeps them together? So they made up words like the, the weak and strong nuclear force, right? So there's three, four, four forces in physics. There's the, the strong and the weak nuclear force, electromagnetic, and then there's gravity. Gravity is the weakest. Okay, so what keeps atoms together? What keeps the, you know, neutron and the proton, all that stuff? Okay, the proton, the neutron, they, they smash the atom. Obviously, you saw what happened in the 30s and the 40s and the nuclear bomb was created. You split the atom and all this energy came out. They found out the atom is made up of stuff. Okay, the protons and the neutrons, that are in there. Then they smash those things. They say, oh, look, there's stuff in there too. And they just keep going smaller and smaller. But gravity has no effect there. Right? So they made up words, like things like quantum gravity. That's what string theory is. Right? So the point is, is that all of these things are, they just keep, they kept getting smaller and smaller to the point where the equations of Einstein broke down. So relativity has... It has nothing, it doesn't work. Gravity doesn't work at a subatomic level, but yet you made up of atoms and whatever, molecules, gravity has an effect on you. So this is a huge problem in science right now. They don't talk about this stuff, but that's the, that's the paradigm, the, 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 the really, really difficult thing that they're doing, that they're dealing with right now, that the theory of relativity of Einstein deals very well with large objects, right? But at a subatomic level, it completely breaks down. Quantum mechanics and quantum theory works really well with subatomic particles and things that have next to no mass, right? Or no mass whatsoever. A photon has no mass. A particle of light, where's, show me the light, where's the mass and light? Now they've measured it, they've weighed it, but that's a different subject, right? The, me even saying this, if a, physicist, if a physicist would hear me talking right now, his brain is exploding. Because I have to use words like mass. That I have to say photons and subatomic, subatomic particles have mass. Right? That's a very, that's a contented topic even in itself. Right? But the point is, is that that theory explains those things and how they work very well. But there's no middle ground. Right? This explains the very small, this explains the very big. But when you apply this to that, explodes. When you apply this to this, it implodes. Right? All the, all the calculations when the people are like, well, what's a black hole? I'm like, it, it, we don't know. You have no idea. Because gravity, is, it's too intense there. That none of the math works. It all goes up in flames. Right? And when you try to apply quantum physics to an apple, the apple is not red, it's not white, it's not an apple, it could be a pear. It's not, it can be an orange, it could be a planet, it could be a sun. It becomes completely random and just uh, ugly. Do you understand? So these are things that, like, uh, uh, that these people are dealing with. At the end of the day, they have shak in all of it. They don't have yaqeen in any of these things. Right? They have no yaqeen in any of this. They only have shak. This is more probable, this is less, less probable. But they're, not certain. but they're not certain about it. Certainty is a word, even Lawrence Cross said, that is an ugly word that no scientist should ever use. The, the science can only prove things that are wrong. That this, isn't, this can't be this. But we don't know what it is. That's why the process in science is not called truthification, it's called falsification. The process of falsifying things. If your theory can be falsified, then it's... It's a valid theory. If I say something with jazm and yaqeen, like la ilaha illallah, they're like, oh, we don't deal with that. It's not our realm. Right? If, even if I say this apple is red, for sure 100%, that's not a scientific statement to them. I'll leave you with that, yeah? That's not a, for me to say the sky isn't blue, or, or forget the sky, that jacket isn't red, that's, a, that's not a scientific statement.
because it can't be falsified. I can't prove it to be false. Hmm. In any case, why do we start talking about this? Is I told you, brothers, you have to keep me on the track, huh? Why do we start talking about quantum mechanics? Doubts. Doubts? Yeah, but why do we get there? We're talking about this gear. About what? You're blaming him, huh? Asa, it's all on you, Akhi. He just threw then you under the bus hardcore, Akhi. <laughs> ah. Subhanallah, Ahsante, Akhi, that's, I think he's right. They waste time or their energy, more, more importantly than that, uh, on calling people to, uh, other than the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Huh? So they, huh? They tried to call them to. Huh? Yeah, oh, they were trying to prove their kufr. Khalas, we don't have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, Ahsante. In any case, going back to the reason why we're here, <coughs> if the da'i is not purifying, or the human being is not purifying himself through iman and through tawheed, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He says what? Waylul lil mushrikeen. Then a place in Jahannam is ready for them, right? So this is telling us to do what? Give importance to self purification, not through what? Secondary things, salah is important, recitation of the Qur'an is important. All of those things, siyam is important, we're doing it right now. But if a Christian walked in here and started fasting, like I knew a Jew who fasted for 30 days on Ramadan, paid five times a day. He was doing more than people, some people claim Islam are doing. But he was a mushrik, he was a, he was a kafir, <coughs> right? He was a Jew, Right? He said, I want to experience Ramadan before I, I was thinking about becoming a Muslim, I want to experience Ramadan. I said, Akhi, what you're doing is just adab upon yourself. You're not benefiting anything. Right? I said, God doesn't want you to leave off drinking and eating and, and whatever you're doing before you recognize Him and make tawheed of Him. There's darajat to this. There's levels. There's a There's a... There's a there's a sequence of actions that need to take place. Rather, you can die not having made a single sajda, not having made a, fasted a single day, given a single dime in charity, but you died upon tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, and Allah Azza wa Jal can forgive you and enter you to Jannah. Rather, you can enter, be the first people to enter Jannah. That's one, that's, one, that's one example, but more, more, more important than that is, for example, the Sahaba who entered Islam uh, at a time, in the time of war. They were Sahaba, they were the companions of the Prophet who died in battle, defending the Prophet ﷺ, defending La ilaha illallah, not having prayed a single prayer. But they fought and they died and Allah Azza promised in paradise. Based on what? On what? La ilaha illallah. That's what. Right? But there's many examples of this. Many examples. The man, the, the hadith, uh, they call it the hadith of bataqa. The, the hadith of the card or the small piece of paper. Where a man was brought forth on the day of judgment. And his scrolls are shown to him. And they're rolled out as far as his eye can see. And they're filled with sin. They're filled with sin and transgression. And he's asked, Hal tun min hadha shay'an? Do you deny any of the things that are mentioned in this that the angels wrote down? He said, La ya Rabbi, no, my Lord. And this is, he says to him, Hal laka hasana? O qamaqad, do you have good deeds with you? Anything? And he says, Ya, la ya Allah, no. Oh Allah, I have nothing. He says, Bal laka hasana? And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, No, rather you have one good deed. And these scrolls, as far as your eye can see, that are they're gonna be weighed now. He says, There's one good deed you did. And the and a small piece of paper with the words La ilaha illallah are written on them. And then the man says, Yeah, yeah, Allah, I'm going to, you're going to throw me in the hell. I'm going to hell. 
but you're going to play with me, make fun of me. Right? And he said, there's no, there's no istihza, there's no making fun here. لا ظلم اليوم. There's no oppression today. Everything is weighed. And so he brings this small piece of paper and, he, and, and both are weighed. And that small piece of paper outweighs everything. All those scrolls as far as the eye can see of sin. He said, La ilaha illallah. Purely and, from, and truthfully from his heart. And it outweighed all of those sins. And the, and the Prophet ﷺ said that the man he entered paradise. Right? So Tawheed is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. It's not a small thing. We think it's small because we don't understand it. We don't know its reality. We don't really, it's not imbued into the, every quantum particle of us. Right? If, you, if it penetrated every part of us, then wallahi, Tawheed is something that we would be walking on clouds 24-7. Salah would be easy. We would pray five times a day without a problem. We would wake up for, for tahajjud without a problem. We would forgive the people who wronged us without a problem. Things would become easy because we're not here for this place. It's just a temporary place. Kun fi dunya ka gharib aw abir al sabil. Like the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, be in the dunya like a stranger or a man who's just a passenger, he's passing through. Right? And that, the person who's, um, who has uh, imbued Tawheed in every aspect of his life and his self or herself, that's how they live. A dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. The Prophet said in the hadith, Sahih Bukhari Muslim, that the, uh, the, the dunya, the, the worldly life, is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever. Right? But it's a prison for the believer because he feels imprisoned by all of this. Right? He wants Allah Azza wa He longs for Him. That's the one who has completely drowned his heart in Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Nothing. There's nothing in his heart except Allah. Every other love he has is through Allah Azza wa Jal. He loves it. He loves her. He loves them. He loves whatever for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So when he loses him, her, them, it, he doesn't, he feels sadness, but he feels rejuvenated. The sadness comes and then it goes. It doesn't have a home in your heart because the home, that, that heart belongs only to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what Tawheed does. Nothing else can take residence there. Nothing else. Right? Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he says, قال Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah fi tafsiri al-ayat al-sabiqa. So Ibn Taymiyyah explaining the ayah we've just read. وَوَيْنٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَيْلٌ to the mushrikun. Those who do not purify themselves or come to purification of themselves and they disbelieve in the hereafter. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, هِيَ التَّوْحِيدُ وَالْإِيمَانُ الَّذِي بِهِ يَسْكُ الْقَلْبِ The zakah that Allah is talking about in this ayah, he says, it is tawheed and iman. It's monotheism and belief in Allah Azza wa Jal by which the heart is purified. فَإِنَّهُ يَتَضَمَّنُ نَفْيَ إِلَهِيَّ نَفْيَ إِلَهِيَّ مَا سِوَى الْحَقِّ مِنِ الْقَلْبِ For indeed, iman, tawheed and iman, it removes, it forbids anything except divine truth from the heart. It removes everything else. Everything else, it removes it except divine truth. وَإِثْبَاتُ الْإِلَهِيَةِ الْحَقِّ فِي الْقَلْبِ And it, it, it affirms divine truth and الحق, meaning Allah Azza wa Jal. It affirms Him, His ilahiyya, His Lordship, His Godship, His right to be worshipped alone. It affirm, affirms that in the heart. وَهُوَ حَقِيقَةُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And that is the reality of لا إله إلا الله. When you say that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah Azza wa Jal, that is that it is, is its reality. That you remove the heart from anything except Allah and the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَهَذَا أَصْلُ مَا تَزْكُو بِهِ الْقَلْبِ 
Al-Qulub. And this is the essence of which, of what uh, the hearts are purified by. وقال ابن القيم رحم الله ابن القيم he said قال أكثر المفسرين من السلف the most of the people of tafsir the, the, the scholars of tafsir from the salaf they said ومن بعدهم and who came after the salaf هي التوحيد the zakat here doesn't mean money it means here purification توحيد شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله the bearing of witness that there's nothing of worship except Allah وَالْإِمَانُ الَّذِي بِهِ يَزْكُ الْقُلُوبِ And the belief by which the heart is purified. وَهُوَ أَصْلُ كُلِّ زَكَاةٍ وَنَمَا And it is the essence of every purification and cleanliness of the heart. Right? وَكَمَا, وكما أَنَّ التَّوْحِيدُ هُوَ أَصْلُ مَا تَزْكُ بِهِ النُّفُوسُ وَتَطْهَرُ فَإِنَّ الشِّرْكُ هو أشد ما يدنس يدنس النفوس ويفتك بها. He says and likewise, just the same way, توحيد is the principle and the essence of which, uh, uh, or the essence by which every heart is purified and and cleansed. Disbelief, shirk, polytheism, associating partners with Allah Azza wa Jal, is the most severe. An ugly form or way by which the hearts become ugly and the hearts become dirty. Allah Azza wa Jalla describes the mushrikun, the pagans in the Quran, by saying what? Inna. He says, Inna al mushrikuna najis. He said, Indeed, the mushrikun are nothing except what? They're impure. Inna ma al mushrikun. Inna ma. We've talked many, many times in Arabic means what? Is adat al hasr. Inama is a prefix that denotes specification. It, so whatever comes after it, it, the, it, it's only that. Right? Like Allah tells the Prophet to say, Qul innama ana bashar. Say, O Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, I am nothing except a human being. He's not the son of God. He's not a part of the light of God. He's, not, he's nothing except a human being. You can't attach him to Allah Azza wa But then he says, Yuha ilay. The difference between me and you is Yuha ilay. That revelation is given to him. Allah Azza wa perfected the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. He perfected him. He cleansed him. He perf- and, he, and he purified him. Other than that, if you cut the Prophet, he bleeds. When his sons died, he wept. When a per- person told a joke, he laughed. Huh? So the, uh, and when the and when the rights of Allah were, were were transgressed upon, he got angry, right? So these were he was a human being, right? So here, Allah Azza wa Jal saying that innama al mushrikuna najis, the mushrikun are nothing except what najis. They're impure. Najasa in Islam is of two kinds. Najasa hissiya. We talked about this. In najasa ma'nawiya, there is tangible impurity, and then there's intangible impurity. Impurity that's metaphysical impurity, you would say, right? So, for example, uh, you go outside and there's feces on the ground, and you step on it. Your shoe is now what? It's najis. It's impure, right? That's tangible impurity. Then there's kufr, shirk, shirk, nifaq, disbelief, paganism, hypocrisy, bid'ah, innovation. These things have, they have najasa, ma'nawiya, metaphor, not metaphorical, sorry, metaphysical impurity. Right? They're impure, but if you touch a mushrik, you don't have to make wudu. Right? <laughs> That's what that means. Right? But their inside, their insides are impure. The insides are impure. Bal, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he goes on to say, he says, Bal huwa muhbitun li jami' al a'mal. Rather, it is what renders all your actions obsolete. Kama qala ta'ala, like Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, wa laqad uuhiya ilayka wa ila alladhina min qablika, la in ashrakta la yahbatanna amaluk, wa la takunanna min al khasirin. Indeed, O Muhammad alayhi wa sallam, we have revealed to you. The same way we reveal, we reveal to those who came before you from the prophets. 
if you make shirk, if you associate partners in your worship, then we will render your actions, your deeds obsolete. And indeed, verily beyond a shadow of a doubt, you will be from amongst the losers in the hereafter. And shirk, paganism, associating partners with Allah Azza wa Jal in worship, is a sin that will never be forgiven if the person who does it dies upon it. You can, you can, you can be forgiven for it in the dunya. Of course. But if you die in a state of shirk, you die in a state of paganism, you die in a state of calling upon others with Allah Azza wa You say, Ya Allah, but then you say, Ya Hussein. You say, Ya Allah, then you say, Oh Jesus. You say, Ya Allah, but then you say, Oh, fill in the blank. Anything created by the other than Allah Azza wa Then he says, just like, because Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Indeed, Allah does not forgive that He is associated with in His worship. But He forgives anything other than that from whoever He wills. So you can meet Allah Azza wa Jal. We have in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, we have a witness from our Prophet والسلام, for forgiveness for a mass murder. Somebody who's murdered a hundred people. But Allah Azza wa forgave him because he sought forgiveness. He sought forgiveness, he died upon Tawheed of Allah Azza wa And Allah forgave him. وَحَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ الْجَنَّةَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مَنْ أَشْرَكَ مَعَهُ غَيْرَهُ And he is forbidden paradise upon every person who's associated with him, Azza wa Jal, partners in worship. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَىٰ Like Allah says in the Qur'an, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Indeed, whoever associates with Allah, partners in worship, He has made Jannah haram upon that person. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارُ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And His final abode will be the hellfire. And indeed, for the oppressive ones, there are no, no one that can help, there's no one that can help them. And here, oppression, zulm is what? Against yourself. This is not a dhulm upon other people. When you make shirk with Allah, you're making dhulm upon yourself. That soul, that fitra that Allah created you upon, that knows its Lord, you're, you're, you're making dhulm upon it. You're, you're, you're suffocating it. You're denying it its birthright, literally. God birthed you in this world to know Him, and you're denying its birthright. That's dhulm. That's oppression. That's the ru'us. That's the ra'as al-dhulm. That's the head of oppression. فَإِذَا حَقَّقَ الْعَبْدُ التَّوْحِيدَ And Allah Azza wa He calls shirk dhulm in the Qur'an. In another place, who knows the ayah? إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَذُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Who said that to who? Luqman to his son? No. Wasn't Luqman to his son? No, Luqman to his son, yes. Yeah, so there's another, there's another ayah where uh, I think it was uh, uh, Ya'qub, was it Ya'qub telling his sons as well? I might be making mixing up two ayat, but yes, Luqman definitely does say it to his son, right? He says, beware from shirk, beware from these things. Then at the end he says what? Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Indeed, shirk is a, a a, a great form of oppression, right? So shirk is a great form of oppression to yourself, first and foremost. فَإِذَا حَقَّقَ الْعَبْدُ التَّوْحِيدَ حَصَرَتْ لَهُ الزَّكَاةُ الْكَامِلَ So if the slave of Allah Azza wa Jal establishes tawheed properly in his life, then he attains the perfect form of purification. Not that he'll become perfect, but that is the most perfect form of purification. Right? وَحَصَلَتْ لَهُ الْهِدَايَةُ وَالْأَمْنِ التَّامَّانِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And he will gain the perfect form of guidance and peace, aman, security in this world and in the next. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ 
وَهُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ Indeed, verily those who believe and they don't cover, they don't veil their iman, they don't veil their belief with dhulm, with oppression. When the, when the Sahaba heard this ayah, they said, مَنْ مِنَّا لَا يَظْلِمُ نَفْسَهُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ they said, who from amongst us doesn't oppress himself, Ya Allah, Ya Rasulullah? They became worried, like, what do you mean? Then the Prophet said, did you not hear your brother or my brother say, meaning the Luqman the Islam, said, Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Indeed, shirk is a great form of oppression. So here we have even the Prophet Islam giving tafsir of an ayah, explaining that shirk, paganism, polytheism, is a great form of upon the self. So those who have belief and they don't veil their belief with oppression, for them is peace and security, and they will be guided. So when you have belief in Iman, when you have Tawheed of Allah Azza wa in your heart, Allah Azza wa gives you guidance. When things get tough, He shows you the way out. Right? وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ What? فُرْقَانًا Right? That whoever, Allah, whoever has fear and taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah gives him furqan. Furqan is discernment. The ability to differentiate between right and wrong. But you have to have iman. You have to have tawheed in your heart. If you don't have tawheed in your heart, that's, you've ripped the foundation of all goodness from, from, from your life. Whether it's in your world or in your hereafter. And we're done almost. Bear with me. فَمَتَى أَخْرَصَ الْعَبْدُ الذُّلَّ لِلَّهِ وَالْمَحَبَّةَ لَهِ خَلُصَتْ أَعْمَالُهُ وَصَحَّتْ And so when the slave makes his, uh, his humility and his lowliness per, uh, sincerely for Allah Azza wa Jal. His dhul. Right? You, you, you break yourself in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. Your brokenness, your humility, your humbleness. Right? And your love for Allah Azza wa Jal becomes purely for Him. His actions become pure. And they become upright. وَالزَّكَتْ نَفْسَهُ وَطَابَتْ And his, his, his soul becomes pure and good. وَمَتَى أَدْخَلَ عَلَيْهَا مَا يَشُوبُهَا مِنْ شَوَائِبِ الشِّرْكِ دَخَلَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ مِنْ الدَّنَسِ وَالتَّدْسِيَةِ بِحَسْبِ ذَلِكِ And when he allows uh, the, the darkness and the, and the ugliness of shirk to enter his heart and his self, then it becomes ugly and dirty, the heart, in direct correlation to how much he allows that to happen. Right? So Riya, for example, when you're praying, and you're praying, inshallah, you're praying for Allah Azza wa Jal, right? But then you hear somebody saying, oh, look at that brother. Or you see somebody watching you pray, and you straighten your back, or you elongate the prayer, right? You're, 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 you're attacking the, 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 the since first of all, the sincerity of your worship, and the what? The validity of it. The validity of your worship is now being what? Damaged viciously, and the mu'min is the one who fights himself. He fights his the shaitan, he fights his soul to say, I don't care who's around, only Allah's in front of me. He forgets everything else, right? And that's a mujahada that requires striving and struggling. And that's you know, that's the hal of the mu'min. He's always back and forth and fighting and making sure that his worship is only for Allah. When he speaks, he speaks only for Allah. That's what he. That's the mu'min. فَلَا زَكَاةَ لِلنَّفْسِ إِلَّا بِتَحْقِيقِ التوحيد. So there is no purification of the self except with establishing tawheed. وَإِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْعِبَادَةِ And singling out Allah in worship. وَإِخْرَاسُ الْعَمَلِ لَهِ And purifying and making your actions sincerely for Him. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى Like Allah says in the Quran. أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِسِ And to Allah belongs the pure and sincere religion. To Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلَا زَكَاةَ لِلنَّفْسِ إِلَّا بِتَخْلِيصِهَا مِنَ الشِّرْكِ بِجَمِيعِ أَنْوَاعِهِ And there is no such thing as self-purification or purification of the self except by purifying yourself from shirk in all its forms, big and small, 
hidden and open. All of it, you need to purify yourself from it. وَتَخْلِيصِهَا مِنْ كُلِّ مَا يُنَاقِضُ التَّوْحِيدِ تَوْحِيدَ وَيُضْعِفَهُ or يُضْعِفُهُ And purifying the self from everything that that goes against Tawheed, that may damage Tawheed or weaken it. Right? So this is the end of the first chapter that he says. So the quick recap. What's the asal? It's one sentence. You don't even have to go that far. Hmm? Establishing Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's it? And acting upon the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's it? That's it? There's a second part to that equation. It's not just la ilaha, it's not la ilaha illallah. It's not only illallah. It purifies, it is what that purifies soul. Okay, but I'm saying that what, what's the qaida? The qaida is a tawheed tazku bihi al qulub, right? The tawheed, hearts are purified by it. But what else? Is that it? That's tawheed. Huh. Also the opposite, like if you're ah. allowing your heart to be out without Tawheed, then it's ah. فَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَمَنْ يَكْفِرْ فَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَيَكْفِرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ You have to have two both things. So Tawheed is what purifies the self, purifies the soul. Yes, acting upon Tawheed. All of that stuff is fine. Yes, ikhlas. And then warding off, keeping yourself safe from what? Shirk, from kufr, from bid'ah, from ma'asi, from sin, from nifaq, from hypocrisy. Right? So it's a two-tier system, not just one. You only you learn about tawheed, you implement tawheed, you adorn yourselves with ikhlas and sincerity for Allah Azza wa Jal only. You make your life purely for Him. And then at the same time, you are constantly, you're vigorous, you're vigilant about shirk. You're vigilant about kufr. You're vigilant about nifaq, about hypocrisy, like the Sahaba. Right? Like Ibn Mulaika, Ibn Abi Mulaika, who was a great tabi'i, who was a student of the Sahaba, used to say, لَقِيتُ ثَلَاثِينَ مِنَ الصحابة. I've met 30 companions of the Prophet. كُلُّ مِنْهُمْ يَخَافُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الْنِفَاقِ Every single one of them, fearing for themselves, hypocrisy. These were companions of the Prophet, والسلام, Companions of the Prophet. Right? They, were, they feared hypocrisy, hypocrisy like we fear hunger. Right? So, but they were muwahidun. So that teaches us and tells us that along with tawheed and everything that we need to do with tawheed, engross our lives and ourselves in it, we need to be vigilant about these things. Shirk, kufr, uh, uh, nifaq, hypocrisy, bid'ah, innovations in the religion. Right? Two-tier system. And like this, we will begin the process of self-purification. Purification of the heart. هذا والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت